Well, Coach, 1-1 one, one draw. What, you th what was your general thoughts on the game tonight? Well, um, I thought we played incredibly poorly in the first half. And I thought in the second half we actually showed up. So I was uh, excited about some of the stuff we did in the second half. Uh, but uh, give uh, Alabama credit. Uh, those kids are tough. They made it hard for us. Uh, but it's it's uh, a, a great uh, uh, series of games we've played against basically uh, maybe the top uh, tier in the SEC. So that's certainly prepared us for our conference. And that was obviously part of the plan. So we've uh, uh, played some great teams, uh, played some great teams away. And uh, I thought uh, uh, we did some good things, uh, certainly in the second half. Coach, you had the chance to scout this program last December in the build up to the College Cup. Matchup didn't happen until tonight. What were some of the things that you saw from Alabama tonight that maybe you did have on your radar? Well, what I loved about them last year is they beat Duke. And trust me, anyone that beats Duke, uh, if you're a Tar Heel fan, is a, becomes a fan of Alabama. So I was a fan instantly. Uh, so I thought they did a great job. Um, my wife taught at 33 years at Duke, so please don't think uh, I don't have respect for Duke, but obviously in athletics, you know, we cheer against them. Uh, so we knew they had a good uh, team, so we wanted to play them. Uh, and uh, we set it up, and uh, we want to continue uh, uh, basically trying to uh, play teams like them on our schedule on a regular basis. And so uh, now Wes will eventually have the pleasure of playing in Chapel Hill. Uh, so uh, uh, obviously if we look forward to that match as well. But honestly, it was certainly a, a great game for the, uh, the neutral, and certainly for the spectator. Um, and. Uh, I just uh, uh, thought uh, there were just so many good moments in that game that are maturing uh, the kids on our roster. So we thought this was really good for our development. We hope it was the same for uh, Wes and his team. Um, and uh, I thought it was a, a hard-fought game. Coach, you talked about how your team, you think the team played poorly in the first half. The first 15 minutes kind of had Alabama on the back foot. What do you feel like changed as the game went on? I can't put my finger on it. Um, it was like, and we had this problem in our first game against Penn State. It's like uh, we didn't show up for the first, you know, part of the game. Um, and uh, we just, we don't understand it. Um, so I don't know if it's a, uh, a leadership issue or an issue with um, what we're doing to try to motivate them to play or a long road trip. I mean, we drove to South Carolina on a bus, played a good team, uh, had a hard fought game there. Uh, maybe that affected our legs to some degree. Uh, so, um, you know, I'll mull that over for a while. Uh, but I'm glad we showed up in the second half, created some good chances. Not that there weren't some good chances for us in the first half. There were some good ones. But in the second half, I thought uh, uh, we did a much better job of uh, uh, getting the ball forward effectively. I think some of the offsides killed us. There was a great series there near the end where Tori Della Peruta uh, flicked a ball into Sentinel. Uh, Sentinel had been on, on sides, so that would have been a great chance because she is a lethal finisher. Um, and we've got to figure out a way uh, not to be off sides as much because I think that broke some of our attack. And so I you know, want to uh, have my kids look at this uh, because if you're looking at the ball, you have don't, no awareness of where you are in the field. And I think a lot of times you're off sides with no awareness of where the offside line was. And so, you know, I tease the girls all the time about, you know, look at the ball, look at the line, look at the ball, look at the line, look at the ball, look at the line. And of course, they're all just focused on the ball and they don't realize they're in an offside position. And I think that was a moment uh, that could have been a game changer for us because the ball that Tori played into her, there was just open space. And she's got a very powerful strike, it's very accurate. And I think uh, uh, that, uh, that put us in a position to basically uh, uh, steal the game. Um, and again, uh, we didn't have the awareness to know we were off. Alabama's in the middle of kind of battling, going back and forth with goalies, but what did you see out of Corey Lee tonight, the goalie that y'all faced? Did a good job, did a good job. I mean, uh, uh, the girl that scored for us was our leading scorer for the last couple of years. She's a lethal finisher. Uh, obviously, we try to train all of our kids, like I'm sure Wes does with his, to shoot low and across the frame, and she does it as a matter of habits. Um, and uh, we want to form good habits with our finishers, and she's got she's a, a marvelous finisher. Um, and I thought that was a really well executed goal. Yeah. Um, but there were other chances in the game actually that were easier than her chance for us. Um, but still, uh, this is why they're paid the big bucks, the the goal scorers. Uh, and uh, she's a senior. Uh, she's had a great career for us. I think um, she'll do well at a professional level. And that was a very, very uh, high-class finish. Uh, and I think it would have beaten most goalkeepers. 
played a lot of the top teams in the, in the, in the SEC, and obviously you have a great experience. What do you see out of this Alabama program from really where it's been not so hot for the last couple of years has been just growing, growing, growing? Yeah, they've got uh, they've got uh, fighters all over the field, and uh, and I appreciate the way they play because they make it hard for us. I mean, what a lot of teams do to prevent us from scoring goals is they pick us up on the tangent of the center circle. Uh, and then sort of pack the box. And that's not the, the philosophy of Alabama uh, or uh, South Carolina or Arkansas for that matter. Uh, they play a you know, different kind of game. Uh, obviously we try to play through the lines. They play a little bit more direct, but it's effective. So, uh, uh, and they also press us. And we struggle to get the ball uh, through their lines. Uh, and I credit their intensity and commitment to defending. Yeah, Coach, um, this goes off. You know, I mean, when you started coaching Alabama and many other SEC schools that didn't have a soccer program going, um, and now you've seen, like you said, this new style starting to emerge. How do you say that affects the um, shape of college soccer as well? Well, obviously, uh, more programs that are committed to the development of their women's soccer games collegiately are going to help all of us. And obviously, the SEC is in a unique position. Most of the schools have dominant football programs. I mean. A couple of my kids, uh, my staff, went to the uh, game against Texas yesterday, and what she did with her phone is she just did a you know scan of you know the fact it was sold out. Uh, and when they've got most of the SEC schools, I think only have 16 programs. Uh, we have 28, and we don't sell out our football stadium the way Alabama sold out theirs. And so the SEC are putting themselves in a really unique position uh, to make uh, waves in any sport they choose. Just because, uh, let's face it, uh, uh, money drives athletic success. And Alabama is in a position to have all kinds of resources financially. And uh, when you know, I saw uh, her, you know, rotating around that stadium to show me what was going on, uh, this makes them formidable. Uh, and as a result, uh, they're going to be uh, uh, an excellent conference uh, for long to come uh, because the money that comes into that conference is uh, extraordinary. Thank you for your time, time. Okay.